Drivers may soon see some relief on the roadways. The Missouri Attorney General filing a lawsuit today to stop some local communities from misreporting how much revenue they take in by ticketing drivers. Why is this a matter of public safety? Still snowing across the area, but it's light for the most part. And what's the question on the screen? Are we going to get more snow? <laughs> we'll have the answer coming up. And thousands are still without power in the city of St. Louis. How did this happen and when might power be fully restored? And the fallout continues across the globe after President Obama announces plans to reopen a U.S. embassy in Cuba. A report from CBS Evening News anchor Scott Pelley in Havana coming up. News for Noon starts right now. Live from KMOV, this is News 4 at Noon. Good afternoon and happy Thursday to all of you. I'm Laura Hedegar in for Emily Rao. Thanks so much for joining us. New at noon, Attorney General Chris Coster filing a lawsuit today against 13 St. Louis County municipalities for predatory ticketing practices. This happening because he says those communities are violating Missouri's Max Creek law and not accurate accurately reporting how much revenue they are taking in from their ticketing programs. The attorney general says this comes down to an issue of public trust and safety. When traffic ticketing is used to promote public safety, that's appropriate. But when traffic ticketing is used to drive revenue in a city, that is inappropriate. And how do we judge that line is a question that has been answered in this Max Creek law. And we say that line is 30%. These small municipalities will be News 4's Alyssa Reitmeyer will have much more on this developing story tonight on News 4 at 5 o'clock. In response to that lawsuit, the Ferguson Commission released a statement saying in part, we commend Attorney General Chris Coster for filing lawsuits to enforce Missouri law to stop the predatory practices of municipal courts in our region. Our commission is working toward making a fairer and more just region. We thank Attorney General Coster for taking stand on this issue. Also new at noon, a civil rights exhibit set to open at the museum or the journalism museum in Washington will include items from the recent unrest in Ferguson. We have learned that the National Museum will display items such as po a police the police poster, rubber pellets used to break up crowds and some other items. The exhibit opens tomorrow. It's part of a national exhibit called Make Some Noise Students and the Civil Rights Movement. A teenager is in the hospital right now after being hit by a car near Tower Grove Park. Officials tell us the girl was hit on South Kings Highway in Arsenal around 1030 this morning. At this time, we do not know the extent of her injuries. No other details were available. As soon as we have more information, we'll bring them to you on our website, KMOV.com. Switching gears now to weather, still some flurries falling in the News 4 viewing area. This was the scene during the early morning commute. You're looking at snow, one of our News 4 this morning photographers captured in Eureka. And the question now for meteorologist Ken Earhart is, what's the weather going to be like the rest of the day? Well, it's still snowing in downtown, and we've had uh, pretty good snow in some areas. Uh, I think Imperial, just under two inches of snow. Um, Imperial. Good, thank you, Kent. It could be a few more hours before thousands of people in the city of St. Louis get their power turned back on. An Ameren official says an equipment problem caused an underground fire late last night. The fire was actually found in a manhole on Broadway and Salisbury. At its peak, more than 7,000 outages were reported. At last check, though, just over 3,000 were still without power in the city. New at noon, we've learned those power outages just wreaked havoc on the school day for some. If your child is a student at either Dunbar Elementary or Carver Elementary in the city, school officials want you to know they've actually been taken to Columbia Elementary today for a full day of classes. So if your child again goes to Dunbar or Carver in the city, you will need to pick him or her up from Columbia Elementary at the end of the regular school day. An update now to a story we first brought you on News 4 this morning. This was the scene early this morning in Richmond Heights near the intersection of Clayton and Big Bend. We've learned it was not a water main break. Instead, it's actually a leak in a pipe. Right now, crews are working to pinpoint that leak so they can repair it. News 4 always tracking crime as police investigate a double shooting in North St. Louis. It happened just before midnight in the 5000 block of Ruskin. Police City police say a man in his 20s was shot in the back. Then a second man showed up at the hospital with a gunshot wound to his hand. 
They told police they were leaving a home when they heard shots and they noticed they had been hit. No word on any suspects. In North St. Louis County now, police are trying to piece together what exactly led to a woman being shot. This is an update to a story that we first brought to you last night at 10 o'clock. Police say a woman was shot on Sunswept Park Drive in Florissant. That is just off New Halls Ferry Road. The woman was taken to the hospital. No word yet on her condition. Now, with the recent uptake, uptick in crime in the St. Louis area, more police officers in the city sounds like a great idea, but News 4 is tracking what it could cost you. The city's budget director has outlined a plan on how to pay for 160 extra officers. This comes less than two weeks after Mayor Francis Slay said the city needs to increase its police force. So here's where you come in. The proposed plan will call for a 5% increase in the parking garage tax. People would also have to pay more for a business license as well as their car license taxes. What we've seen since August and we believe there's a Ferguson effect. This crime is now starting to go up, particularly crime against people, uh, against persons in the city of St. Louis. And that's something that concerns me greatly. Uh, one of the most important things we can be doing is, you know, protecting the public. The plan still needs to be approved by the Board of Aldermen. Then it would be put on a ballot for voters to decide. In national news, governments around the world are applauding the United States and Cuba after their diplomatic breakthrough. On Wednesday, President Obama said he will restore relations between the countries after more than five decades. In Cuba, there's a sense of hope and jubilation. CBS Evening News anchor and managing editor Scott Pelley has more from Cuba's capital, Havana. As the sun rises in Cuba, Scott Pelley, CBS News in Havana. CBS will have much more on this developing story tonight on the CBS Evening News. That's right after News 4 at 5 o'clock. Coming up, though, on News 4 at noon, one Metro East community is getting a steep tax hike. We've got the details on how much more you should expect to pay and why. And if you are a woman in Missouri, one of your lawmakers is causing quite the controversy after a proposed law that would change when you could get an abortion. What that proposal would require is coming up next. You're watching News 4, watching out for you. News 4, always watching out for your health, and a Missouri lawmaker is pushing a plan that would require women to get permission from the father of their baby before getting an abortion. Under this proposed legislation, women, women must show notarized permission from the father. The only exceptions would be in the cases of rape or incest. An identical bill was proposed in the last legislative session, but it never made it out of committee. An important news for any of you parents of college students, News 4 is learning about a sex assault task force that has been formed at the University of Illinois. The task force is made up of public safety officials and also students. It met for the first time yesterday. The group will conduct surveys at the Urbana-Champaign, Chicago, and Springfield campuses to assess the situation at each school. And if you live in Caseyville, get ready to pay a whole lot more in taxes. Property taxes there are going up by nearly 20%. The Village Board of Trustees recently voted to increase property taxes by 17.5%. Here's where the extra money will go. The police pension fund, the municipal employee retirement fund, and a social security and Medicare fund. Folks there will see that increase starting in June. Coming up on News 4 at noon, we're finding out just how much you should expect to save in 2015 with the lower gas prices. Plus, with threats coming in, Sony has canceled the Christmas Day release of the new James Franco movie, the interview. Now we're learning when the U.S. government may decide to respond to the cyber attack on Sony. But first, let's take a look at the fun facts. With Christmas only a week away, do you know what year the modern image of Santa Claus first came out? That answer coming up a little later, only on News 4 at noon. You're watching News 4, watching out for you. New at noon, a major development in the Sony hacking case. Investigators have determined hackers working for North Korea were behind the cyber attack. An official announcement could come as soon as today. This move from the federal government comes after the decision yesterday from Sony to pull the Christmas Day release of the controversial movie, The Interview. Now, the plot jokes about the assassination of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. U.S. officials say the government is now offering support to Sony in responding to the hack. Every company needs to be uh, investing in cyber protection. 
Uh, and as I said before, we're doing what we can within the executive authorities of the president to do what we can across the federal government, both to protect federal government assets and to work with the private sector. The FBI has been investigating the hack and the Department of Homeland Security says there is no credible intelligence to indicate an active plot against movie theaters here in the United States. News 4 is looking into how much these low gas prices will save you in the long run. The average driver will spend about $1,900 on gas next year. That is a projected savings of about $550 bucks compared to this year. It also means you can tack on an extra $45 bucks to your monthly budget. The last time projected yearly spending at the pump was this low was way back in 2004. And if you are tired of your rent spiking every year, hey, you're not alone. Landlords are raising rental prices in the United States at the fastest pace in six years. And according to the Census Bureau, the number of vacant rentals is the lowest it's been in 20 years. So the reason is in part due to high demand from families who either don't want to buy a home or who cannot afford one. Well, snow's still coming down in parts of our viewing area. I'm tracking that on the Doppler radar. I'll tell you how much more snow we'll get, how the rest of the week is lining up, the weekend, and we're even going to look ahead to Christmas Day on my seven-day outlook coming up. All right. Thank you, Kent. Now, Kent and I will be right back with the answer to today's fun fact. Here it is. Do you know what year the modern image of Santa Claus first came out? That answer is next only on News 4 at noon. Wow, and check out this Christmas lights display. If you can, go ahead and take a look at your screen. A Canadian couple spent months getting their house ready for the holidays. Get this, 30,000 lights, hundreds of hours of programming. So the script here says the payoff, <laughs> dozens of visitors come to their street each night to look at this. Mm -hmm. Really? That's the payoff? I wonder if the neighbors agree that that's a, that's a payoff is having dozens of people going up and down their street all the time. It is cool when everybody on your street uh, gets in on the act and, uh, and everybody lights up. Uh, it's, it's neat. How and much do you think their beautiful. electric bill oh, is going to cost? I wouldn't even want to think of Woo! That. All right. Speaking of Christmas, though, time now to answer today's fun fact. Just a week away from today, do you know what year the modern image of Santa Claus as we know him today with the red and white suit first made an appearance? The year 1931. You can thank Coca-Cola for this. Coca-Cola used the red and white version of Santa in an illustrated advertising campaign. Did you know that? I did not. I did not. You I learned not something alone, every around day. Back then. You weren't? Almost, no. Not quite. I wasn't either. All right. Well, we still have a little light <laughs> snow around the area, but that's drying up pretty good. Uh, we'll have a forecast update, of course, with uh, Steve Templeton coming up on News 4 beginning at 5 and again at 6. Have a great afternoon.